Hello, I'm Dave from Rapid Education, and today I'm going to show you how to make the 555 timer project. In this Key Stage 3 and 4 project, students will learn how to make a simple 555 timer circuit. A 555 timer is a versatile integrated and electronic circuit and is found within many electronic products. In this project, the 555 IC will be used in conjunction with a potentiometer to create a monostable timing circuit. A monostable project works by responding to an input, in this project a push-button switch, which in turn affects an output, the LED. The LED will remain illuminated for a predetermined period of time based on how long it takes for the capacitor to charge. When the capacitor is fully charged, the buzzer will sound and the LED will go out. In an A-stable circuit, the LED will blink on and off without any input present. The timing of monostable and A-stable circuits is determined by the values of the capacitors and resistors used. As part of the project, students will learn about the 555 IC, timing delays, monostable circuits, and are encouraged to develop a product around a monostable circuit, such as an egg timer or board game timer. This kit comes in a pack of five, however you can purchase in a class pack of 20 which comes with a grapnels tray for easy storage. We've also created extensive teacher's notes to accompany this project which include resources for a six week lesson plan. In this kit you'll find a one mega ohm carbon preset potentiometer, one miniature push switch, one 12 volt miniature buzzer, one eight pin dill socket, one NE555 bipolar single timer, one single pole double throw miniature slide switch, one 220 microfarad radial lead aluminium electrolytic capacitor, one 5mm 2.2 volt red LED, one 10K quarter watt carbon film resistor, one 470 ohm quarter watt carbon film resistor, one PP3 battery clip with tinned fly leads and one PCB board for mounting. You're also going to need some equipment wire, some wire strippers, some miniature cutters, one soldering iron, a PP3 battery, helping hands and some solder wire. Before starting the soldering process, Ensure that your soldering iron is switched on and at the correct operating temperature for the solder you're using. Ensure you have the PCB to hand and set it nearby. First, locate your 10K carbon film resistor and place the legs through the holes denoted R1 on the PCB board. Bend the legs back against the rear of the PCB to ensure the resistor doesn't fall out when soldering and put the board aside. Next, locate your 470 ohm carbon film resistor and push the legs through the holes denoted R2 on the PCB board, again bending the legs back so that the resistor doesn't fall out when soldering. Now place the PCB board in the helping hands ready for soldering. Solder the legs against the solder tags located on the back of the board, then snip off any excess resistor leg using your side cutters. Now take your preset potentiometer and place it on the board designated for this component. Again bend the legs back and solder into place with the help of the helping hands. Snip off any excess leg material and set aside. Now locate your buzzer, noting that one of the legs is slightly longer than the other. This long leg is the positive leg or anode. Place the buzzer onto the PCB board, ensuring that the anode is placed in the hole marked with the positive symbol. Bend the legs back, solder into place and remove any excess material using your side cutters. You can also remove the label covering the top of the buzzer, as this is no longer needed. Next, take your electrolytic capacitor, again noting the longer leg or anode, and place onto the PCB board ensuring that the anode goes through the hole marked with a positive symbol. Bend the legs back, solder into place, and remove any excess material. Take your deal socket, noting the small notch in the housing on one side and place it into the PCB board, being careful to align the notch on the component with the notch found on the diagram printed on the PCB board. Bend the legs back and solder into place. Now take your 555 timer and place it into the recently soldered dill socket on the board, ensuring that the notch on the timer aligns with the notch on the dill socket. Next, take your red LED. Your red LED also has a longer leg or anode Ensure that this longer leg is placed into the hole on the PCB board marked for the red LED that has a positive symbol next to it. 
Bend the legs back and solder into place. Remove any excess material and place the board aside. The next component you'll need is your miniature slide switch. Place the legs through the holes denoted for the slide switch, ensuring that the switch faces outwards, making it easy for you to turn your project on or off. Solder into place and remove any excess material. Next, select your PP3 battery clip. Notice that the tips of each wire has been pre-tinned, so you won't need to go through this process. Place the red wire through the positive hole on the board and bend the leg back to hold into place. Now take the black wire and repeat this process for the remaining hole. Solder into place using the helping hands and remove any excess material with your side cutters. Now take some equipment wire. If you're using multi-strand wire, twist the strands tightly against each other, then tin the wire by running the solder and soldering iron against the bare core, coating the strands in a thin layer of solder. Pick up your miniature push switch and thread the tinned wire of one strand through one of the holes located on the legs of the switch. Bend the wire so that it doesn't fall out of the hole and repeat this process for the remaining strand. Place the switch into your helping hands and solder the wires to the legs, creating a permanent bond between the core of the wire and the contacts of the switch. Now thread the other end of the wire strand through the holes remaining on the PCB board, bend back the strands, solder into place and remove any excess material with your side snips. This now completes the soldering process, so ensure that you switch off your soldering iron. Once you've completed your soldering, attach your PP3 battery to the PP3 battery clip. Adjust the amount of time that your timer takes to count down using the potentiometer located on the board that you've just soldered. Switch on your timer, bearing in mind that when you turn on the timer, the buzzer will sound. To activate the timer, push your push button switch and the red LED will illuminate. The red LED will stay illuminated until the timer has counted down and then the buzzer sounds again. If you'd like more information on this kit, then please just click on the link below to access all the teacher's notes. Also, if you've enjoyed this video, then please just subscribe to our YouTube channel where you can view all the videos in this series. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.